Now, I think we all have our preference when it comes to stick welding. I've heard people teach figure eights, horseshoes, some circles, triangles, a whole bunch of stuff. Hell, you can sit there and Google motions for 7018 weaving and you'll get a ton of suggestions. I'm here to tell you that it's all a bunch of baloney and it's really not that complicated. Now for today's video, we're gonna try these five basic patterns that are most relevant or just not out of complete left field. We're gonna do this with a 7018 in the vertical up position just on a flat piece of plate. I find it kind of challenging to maintain a certain width and height on a weld with the 7018 going up, especially with an eighth inch rod. So we're gonna try to maintain that all while doing these different weaving patterns. I wanna be delicate with the word weaving because we're not gonna necessarily weave things, we're just using oscillation. I don't know if you remember this video we did a while back on weaving a 7018. You could do motions, but we got to stay within our parameters. So I've laid out the other side, trying not to be any much wider than three eighths of an inch. We're going to try to keep that width as well as the amperage for our machine and still trying to keep the max tolerance under or at an eighth of an inch for the height of the bead. All we have to do now is just get our machine set. We've got the volt here to 120 amps and we can open up a fresh pack of 7018 Atomarks and let's get to welding. First up is the classic zigzag or the Z weave. One thing I try to focus on as with all these techniques is making sure I get the sides enough attention. The way we are moving while fighting gravity, the middle of the weld is going to get easily more reinforced on its own than the sides. So moving side to side, getting to those edges, you'll hear a lot of people tell you to pause on the edges. Definitely solid advice, especially if you take the larger steps in your zigzag pattern, you'll have to pause a little bit longer on your toes. I'd prefer to move just fairly quickly side to side and not focus too much on pausing or having to count on each one of the sides because I feel like that gets a little distracting. Up next, we have the figure eight motion. Now, honestly, I thought going into this one that it was a bit too much, like it's doing way too extra. I also thought it was gonna be a lot taller of a weld than what actually was laid down. In reality, it really wasn't too much different than the zigzag, but with just that little bit more razzmatazz to it. Aside from the gnarly arc blow and digging at the very top of this plate that I can't seem to shake, all in all, it looked a little bit better than the zigzag, but I don't think that's necessarily the technique. I think I'm just warming up a little bit because they're pretty much still the same look and weld for the most part. Another OG technique is the horseshoe or the U technique or the crescent technique. It's practically the same thing as a zigzag if you kind of think about it, but the biggest difference is that little bit of drop down through the middle. This can get carried away a bit, leaving a little bit more of a taller weld than you probably wanted. Remember, we're only going for an eighth inch max re reinforcement, so we really have to focus on getting to those toes and spending no time in the middle. This isn't a bad technique if you had some dirty material in front of you, kind of burn it out before you build up on top of it. But regardless, I had a hard time keeping that weld height to the max tolerance. Same thing with this next one. I want to take a quick second to let this plate cool and in the meantime I want to shout out to today's video sponsor which is Aesop. They got a slew of welding solutions for you. All you got to do is go check them out over there on the website. They got the Ruffians, the Rustlers, the Rogues, the Rebels, the Volt Hears, battery powered. We're not even running the batteries right now and you can run it off power. They've got a ton of solutions for you. Super stoked to see the new Ruffian engine drive coming out this next year. It should be a real beast, a real contender for the other guys. We appreciate Aesop and everything they do for the industry and be on the lookout for 2026. I think you might have an opportunity to try out that engine drive if you live here in the United States. I feel like this next one is a little bit more for special applications like fillet welds or trying to weld on some dirty material. The idea is that you'll start by coming up the center of the triangle going to the tip of the triangle and then drop back down to each one of those two corners or the sides. I use this most of the time in root passes on fillet welds, sometimes on dirty metal or galvanized stuff where you kind of come out a little bit further in front of you to kind of burn out the trash, but it never really <laughs> necessarily lays down a pretty weld. Now again, if you go on a different type of joint configuration or your groove weld is a little bit deeper and you have some room for that, then maybe you can get away with it. But coming up the middle and spending so much time on the center and not getting enough time to the sides, I'm definitely seeing a taller weld. This next one's a personal favorite of mine, especially when I started out before I learned the secret to all these welding techniques, and that's doing these tight circles. I felt that it was always the simplest technique when I was a young welder. I felt it was the best way that I can keep a clean, uniform, consistent weld. Keeping those tight circles was key, and usually in any position, like flat, horizontal, overhead, it always laid down a nice, smooth bead. But in the vertical position, well, it did too, but again, going back to the idea of less time in the middle and more time in the sides, you were spending a little bit more time in the middle than I 
I'd like. So aside from it being a little bit crooked, it is a nice looking weld, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna be too tall for the, our max reinforcement gauge. Now, as we take a look at these welds here, I already know what y'all are gonna say. I need to work on my tie-ins. I got a couple misses, they're not great, and I can't seem to hold a straight line to save my life. These things are all squirrely and all over the place for the most part, and you probably see these little grinded spots. I actually shot this segment already once. One of the cameras wasn't on, so I missed pretty much half of the shot, and I, afterwards I was playing around and put some beads on it, so I ground them off in case you were wondering. Regardless, these are the welds that we made, these first five here. We've got our zigzags, we got the crescents, we got the horseshoes, triangles, and the circles. Honestly, they all look kind of similar as far as width. The height is a little bit different because we always talked about spending time in the center and getting to the sides. Zigzags was really good at that. Here at the bottom, I'm not hitting that max reinforcement on my go gauge here, which is only an eighth of an inch. So if I can set this gauge down and I don't have a teeter-totter on it, then I'm sitting at that eighth of an inch max reinforcement or a little bit under. As I go up this weld, see we got some teeter-totter in it. There's some, some lower spots. So that tells me that if I maybe increase the travel speed or moved a little bit faster, I could probably keep that reinforcement down. Or maybe if the weld joint was different, like a fillet weld, or maybe the groove had a little bit of depth of preparation that I could fit a weld that was a little bit taller, then maybe we could get away with it. Here at the bottom of this weld, we're not too high, but we get higher as we go. That tells me something about my travel angle maybe off but definitely when we get to these triangles and the circle welds where we're spending so much time in the middle, we're seeing nothing but rock and welds. It's too high, hitting that max reinforcement could be an unacceptable weld. The main reason that I wanted to point all this out to you today is when you're welding, you have to maintain certain variables. As we know, your arc length, your travel speed, your travel and work angle, all those things usually need to pretty much stay the same the entire weldment. So adding all these different oscillations and techniques and styles just adds another variable that you have to keep up with. This bead right here, I took that variable out. We just ran a stringer bead. No motion, no circles, no nothing, just a straight line, <laughs> or at least as straight as I could see. I could not see my scribe lines to save my life. Maybe if I used a cutoff wheel and make them a little bit deeper, I could see better, making excuses for myself. We're not above an eighth of an inch anywhere on this well. We're not getting out of tolerances. I know it's not too wide. It's thinner than all of these. So stringer beads is why it's a lot of times super recommended in most welding applications. Adding that extra variable as far as doing some motion and stuff, it does help. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you you shouldn't do it because there are some times where I feel the need to do that. But just to prove my point a little bit further though that it doesn't necessarily matter is I ran this bead here. Now, while it's not exactly straight, it's still holding my tolerances and I didn't do anything but just like scribble scrabble on my way up. No pattern or nothing, I just made a early morning shake. Just stayed up too late the night before and I just could not keep my hands steady. And I've, I swear, I've watched so many old school guys weld like this where they're just shaking their way up the joint and I'm watching them like, dang, how did that bead turn out good? I watched you shake like crazy. There's a lot of glory in that. Someone's just so experienced that they realize they don't have to think about it that hard. Just weld it, quit overthinking it, hold your normal variables, keep them the same, and you'll make a good weld. You can do all the other things if you wanna put a little pizzazz in it, but it's not necessary. I hope that helps some of y'all understand a little bit about all the different types of weaving and other motions that you can or shouldn't or maybe don't have to do. Appreciate it, thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next weld.